blood pressure is called the silent killer and for a good reason. Most people don't know they have it until it's too late. I'm Dr. Barron and in this video, I'll show you the 10 biggest mistakes people make about managing their blood pressure. The same ones that make people look back and say, I wish someone told me this sooner. Mistake number one is finding excuses for high blood pressure. One of the most dangerous things I hear, and I hear it all the time, is people looking for excuses to justify their high blood pressure. They might say, it's just stress, doc. That's why my blood pressure is up. Or, what do you expect, doc? Of course my blood pressure is high. I'm always in pain. So yes, stress and pain can raise your blood pressure, but that doesn't make it okay. Your heart doesn't care why the blood pressure is high. Your brain doesn't care. Your kidneys don't care. They just absorb the pressure and over time they give out. Your body doesn't say, let me just hit pause. The body doesn't have a button that says, let's stop damaging the arteries until the pain goes away or until the stress is over. The pause button doesn't exist. High blood pressure puts constant strain on your arteries, especially the small ones in your brain, your heart, and your kidneys. And the higher your blood pressure is, the more it stretches the walls, causing tiny microscopic tears in the lining of the arteries. Your body tries to repair those tears, but it does it with scar tissue, inflammation, and plaque buildup. Over time, those arteries become stiff, narrow, and weak. Then one day, you may be a little more stressed, or you eat something salty, or you may go to the dentist and have a painful procedure and your blood pressure spikes, and that weakened blood vessel can't take it anymore and bursts. That's when bleeding in the brain starts. That's when a bleeding stroke happens. Another way high blood pressure can cause a stroke is by leading to a plaque buildup, which then triggers the blood clots that blocks the blood flow to the brain. So yes, Pain and stress can raise your blood pressure, but that doesn't make it okay. Your arteries and your organs are getting damaged regardless of the reason for the high blood pressure. Mistake number two. Another mistake I see all the time is when someone refuses to take blood pressure medication because they feel fine. They say, I don't wanna take pills for the rest of my life. Or they may say, give me six months, doctor. I'm going to lose weight first. Sometimes they might say, I tried a blood pressure medication before and it didn't make me feel right. So maybe high blood pressure is simply just normal for me. High blood pressure is called the silent killer for a reason. Most people don't have symptoms until it's too late. The first sign could be a stroke. It could be a heart attack. It could be your kidneys failing. Now don't get me wrong. It is incredibly important to work on lifestyle changes. If you're overweight, Losing 5 to 10% of your body weight, or even just 10 pounds, can meaningfully lower your blood pressure. Cutting back on salt also helps. Regular exercise, like brisk walking 20 to 30 minutes most days, makes a difference. So does reducing alcohol, managing stress, and improving sleep. Some natural supplements may also help lower blood pressure. Magnesium can help relax your blood vessels, and beet supplements may help as well. But if your blood pressure is still high while you're making these changes, you may want to consider taking medication, even temporarily, to protect your heart, brain, and kidneys. Lifestyle changes are very important, but they work best when you also keep a close eye on your blood pressure readings and use medication, if needed, to stay safe. Mistake number three is declining treatment without seeing the bigger picture. I've had this conversation more times than I can count. The blood pressure is clearly out of control, we have confirmed it, and yet the patient says they're not ready to start medication. Here is what I tell them. When you go home, please tell your significant other that you have high blood pressure. Tell them that we have safe, inexpensive medications for you to treat the high blood pressure, and yet you have decided not to take medication. Now please, just make sure they're okay with that, because if your uncontrolled high blood pressure causes you to have a stroke, your significant other might be the one who would need to take care of you, help you get dressed, go to the bathroom, or feed yourself. 
Well, that usually gets their attention. A lot of people think skipping blood pressure medication only affects them, but it doesn't. This is not like deciding not to take medication for heartburn or skipping your rosacea cream. Those things might make you uncomfortable, but you are the only one affected. Refusing to take medications for high blood pressure is a different story. With high blood pressure, if you end up having a stroke, it's not just your life that changes. Someone else might have to take care of you, help you get dressed, manage your bills, your appointments, your day-to-day -day life. This isn't just about avoiding a medication. It's about who is going to live with the consequences if something goes wrong. And honestly, once people hear it that way, most of them say, okay, doc, I'll take the prescription. Mistake number four is another one I hear often. This is different from the first mistake because these patients do not believe that the blood pressure reading reflects their true risk. Someone comes in and the blood pressure is 200 over 100 and immediately they say, well, this is not my real blood pressure. I just rushed in from the car. I didn't get to rest for five minutes. Yes, it is important to check your blood pressure the right way. That means sitting with your back supported, feet flat on the floor, not crossed, arms supported at heart level, cuff directly on the skin, not over closed, no talking, eating, or looking at your phone, resting for at least five minutes before the reading. That's how we make sure the blood pressure reading is accurate. But here is the truth. If your blood pressure is 200 over 100, it doesn't matter if you rushed into the office or didn't rest for the full five minutes. That's still dangerously high. Let me give you an example. When cardiologists do a stress test, they actually put you on a treadmill and make you walk and sometimes even jog while your heart is being monitored. And during that test, they measure your blood pressure multiple times while you're moving. Why? Because they want to see how your blood pressure responds to activity. Normally, the top number will rise a little with exercise, but it should stay within a safe range. If your blood pressure really shoots up much higher than expected, that's a sign your blood vessels are stiff or your cardiovascular system isn't handling stress well. So no, walking into the office from the parking lot doesn't make a 200 over 100 reading acceptable. If anything, it makes it more concerning. You don't live in a bubble. You walk, you talk, you get stressed, you eat salty meals, you deal with your pain, your blood vessels face these pressures in daily life, and if they can't handle them without skyrocketing, you are at risk. So yes, the guidelines are to check blood pressure at rest, but extremely high readings are never acceptable. Mistake number five is only checking blood pressure at the doctor's office. Blood pressure changes all day long. Some people have what's called white coat hypertension. Their blood pressure spikes only when they're in a medical setting often because of anxiety. At the office, it looks dangerously high, but at home, it may be normal. Other people have the opposite problem, masked hypertension. Their readings look normal in the office appointments, but at home or at work, their blood pressure is always high. And that can be just as dangerous or even more so because it often goes undetected. That's why checking your blood pressure outside the clinic is important. Use a home monitor, or if you don't have one, you can check your blood pressure at a local pharmacy or the fire station. Try to take multiple readings at different times on different days while you're sitting comfortably and relaxed. Without these additional readings, you're making decisions based on one small snapshot, and that can lead to overtreatment, undertreatment, making the wrong diagnosis, or missing the diagnosis altogether. Mistake number six is ignoring the difference between the arms. Your first blood pressure check should be in both arms. If the systolic number is more than 10 to 15 points higher in one arm, it could mean narrowing of a major artery. We use the higher arm for future checks, and sometimes we investigate further to rule out serious vascular disease. Mistake number seven is checking the blood pressure incorrectly. Many false readings happen because of technique. Using the wrong cuff size, for example, if the cuff size is too small, the reading can be falsely high. Too large, the reading can be falsely low. Measuring over clothing, not supporting the arm at the heart level, 
talking during the reading, each of these mistakes can change your reading by 5 to 20 points. The next mistake is missing the hidden benefits of blood pressure medication. Many people are not aware that blood pressure medications can do far more than just lower blood pressure. When we choose the right one, we can often treat more than just blood pressure. Let me give you some examples. If a woman has high blood pressure and hair loss, I often prescribe spironolactone. It can lower the blood pressure and help with the hair thinning at the same time. Now, I usually avoid spironolactone in men because it can cause breast soreness. On the other hand, for men with high blood pressure and hair loss, I may use oral minoxidil. It helps regrow hair and lower blood pressure too. But I usually avoid minoxidil in women because it can cause unwanted facial hair. If someone comes in with anxiety or maybe hand tremors or even migraines, I may choose a beta blocker like propanolol or metoprolol. These medications not only control blood pressure, but they can also ease anxiety and tremors at the same time. If a man has high blood pressure and also struggles with an enlarged prostate, I may consider an alpha blocker like doxazosine. This can help urinary flow and take care of the blood pressure at the same time. It's great benefit when the blood pressure medication can help improve other aspects of your health as well. Mistake number nine is ignoring blood pressure after starting medication that may raise blood pressure. Many people don't realize that some medications can actually raise your blood pressure. And if you start one of these medications without checking the blood pressure again for a few months, you could be walking around with uncontrolled hypertension and not even know it. For example, birth control pills and estrogen therapy can elevate blood pressure. Testosterone therapy can do the same. Steroids like prednisone, which are often used for inflammation, can also increase blood pressure. Even ADHD medication and common decongestions like pseudoephedrine can push it higher. And let's not forget over-the-counter pain relievers like ibuprofen or naproxen. These NSAIDs might seem harmless, but they can quietly elevate your blood pressure without you knowing. If you start one of these medications, you should check your blood pressure within two to four weeks and again at three months. Don't wait until your annual exam to recheck your blood pressure. Finally, mistake number 10. Some people still think that if their blood pressure is 140 over 90, it means that they're fine. But the blood pressure guidelines have changed. Stage one hypertension now starts at 130 over 80 because even at these levels, your risk for heart attack, stroke, and kidney disease increases. The goal is not just to stay under 140 over 90, it's to aim for optimal control specific to your health situation. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And remember, this is for educational purposes only, not medical advice. See you in the next one.